Okay, so yesterday we talked about like just the basic counting principles. How if you wanted to find a simple probability where you're just pulling something out of a hat or an even number or something like that, then you could just take what you're aiming for and put it over what you've got in its entirety. Then we talked about the difference between with replacement and without replacement. So if I take something out and I put it back, I'm starting with a fresh set every time. We said things like rolling a die, flipping a coin, or a randomly generated number from a computer is always with replacement. We're always assuming we start with a fresh set every time. And then without replacement is if you like reached your hand in and you pulled something out and then you kept it and how that's gonna impact both what we're trying to get and the overall amount. Then we worked through these four, right? Yeah. We worked through the fundamental counting principles. So if there's different events occurring, like in the homework, it says something about, uh, what is it, clothes? Like you have so many shirts, so many pants, so many socks. What are all the combinations that you could get? And you would just multiply how many different styles of each. How many styles of shirts, how many styles of pants, how many styles of socks, that kind of thing. You would just multiply them all out to figure out how many, how many different number of ways. We talked about the different letters from the alphabet that we would do 26 times 26. We did the combination lock, which was 30 times 30 times 30. We did the license plate, which is the two letters times the four digit number. And then we left off on permutations. So permutations are used to determine the ways that n elements can be arranged in an order. So if I wanted to take all of you, let's say there's 30 of you, okay? And I wanted to put you in these seats like I do for, for new seating charts, right? Which we get next week. If I wanted to figure out how many, you get them every quarter, how many different ways I could put you in order, okay, so there's an, an order, this is called a permutation. Because if I, let's say I line you all up at the front of the room, right, and there's 30 of you, and I go to put, let's just say I put William in a seat. If there's 30 of you and there's 30 chairs, right, and I go to put William in a seat, how many options do I have to put William in? 30, okay, now I put William in a seat. And then I go to put Paolo in a seat. How many seats are left for Paolo? 29. And I put Paolo in a seat. And then Greer comes. And how many seats do I have left? 28. How, what are you seeing happen to this number? It's going down by one, right? And I would multiply those all out because those are different events. So what is it called when we multiply a number? One less, one less, one less, one less, one less. It's a factorial. So permutations are found using factorials. So if it, it's however, however many options you have, factorial would be how you find permutations. So if I'm trying to figure out how many ways 10 objects can be put in order or arranged, you're gonna look for words like that. My answer is a permutation, which would be 10 factorial. Now on your graphing calculator, remember all the calculators are different, but on a graphing calculator, if you hit, if you have it, you can take it out, you can look at it. If you hit the math button, and you scroll over to probability, the fourth thing in the line is your factorial. So you would first type 10, then you would hit the math button, then you would go over to the probability menu, and then you'd go down to number four, which is a factorial. So if I wanted to do that again, you have to type the number in first. So 10, math, probability, factorial, hit enter, and I get 3628800. So 3,628,800 different ways to put just 10 items in order. That is a lot. So a question like that, obviously that's that large, would be on the portion of your, cal of your test in which you'll have your calculator. So keep in mind that you're gonna have part with and part without. That way you can choose what kind you have. Oh, I have, like again, you guys have 800 different kinds of calculators. If you have a scientific one, they usually have that probability. I mean, they usually have a probability menu or they have the little exponent, I mean, ex exclamation mark. You just need to locate it. And then if not, then you're doing 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two. You could save yourself the times one because it won't do anything. But you're gonna want a calculator for that. So this says, find the number of permutations of the following letters. How many letters are here? 
One, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be six factorial, six times five times three, oops, I skipped four, times four times three times two times one, or use your calculator, six math probability exclamation mark, 720. So if it was on the portion of your test that didn't allow you to have a calculator, it would be smaller numbers. Okay, it is possible to see something. Again, in place of the word permutations, you could see the words arranged or in order. How many order? How many different orders can you put them in? That kind of thing. Because it might not be so explicit with the word permutation. Probably won't be. Which right now is not a big deal, but when we get to combinations, you need to be different. Okay, permutations of elements taken a certain amount at a time. So if I say, again, I have the same six letters, but how many different ways can I pull two of those letters out? Or if I say there's 30 of you at the front of the row, or front of the classroom, I only want 10 of you to sit down in, in these seats. How could I fill these 10 seats? That's a certain amount at a time. And that is PNR, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial. So R is the amount of time at a time. So if I have 30 total students, and I want to fill the 10 middle seats in the room, how many ways can I fill those 10 seats? This would be 30 factorial over 30 minus 10 factorial. A lot of calculators also have the PNR. So if you looked at that same menu on a graphing calculator, it has CNR and PNR, okay? Which is the binomial coefficient, but also we're gonna see it with combinations. All right, so this one says, find the number of permutations of eight horses taken three at a time. So what is my N? N is eight. What is my R? Three. So this would be N factorial over N minus R factorial. 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial over 5 factorial. These are going to cancel, and then I get 8 times 7 times 6, which is 336. Or you go to the math menu, arrow over to probability, down to NPR, type the 8 in on the left, the 3 in on the right, Hit enter and you get 336. You can also do the, on the graphing calculator under the probability menu, it says NPR. So on the newer ones, it will give you the actual like subscript. You just plug those numbers in. On the older ones, you have to type in first eight, then you go math, then you go probability, then you go down to NPR. The eight has to be in front though. Then you would type three and hit enter and you get your answer. So these could be on either the calculator portion or the non-calculator portion depending on how big that, that, those numbers are. Just be prepared to do both. Okay, B says flat out evaluate P, 6P2. So I'm gonna go to the math menu. I'm gonna go over to probability. I'm gonna go down to number two. I'm gonna hit six. I'm gonna go over to two. That's 30, or 6 factorial over 4 factorial, which is 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial, which is 30. Oh, I forgot my zero. So, so what we did before was C. The difference is there's no R factorial being multiplied at the end. Yeah. Yep. So there's the two different equations, and you'll see them used two different ways. Questions on that one. All right, distinguishable permutations. Suppose a set of n objects has n1 of one kind of object, n2 of a second kind of object, n3 of a third kind of object, and so on. So a lot of times you'll see these with words and letters. Like if you saw the word Mississippi, you've got a set of numbers total, but you also have repeated letters, right? I is repeated, S is repeated, P is repeated, all that stuff. So the way you do distinguishable permutations is the number overall on the top, so n factorial on the top, and then all the different letters get their, each their own factorial. So if m is only there once, then it would be one factorial. 
But if I is there, I don't even know, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, four times, then it would be four factorial for the I. And then I would count how many times P is there, and that would get its own factorial. So each of the repeated ones gets their own factorial in the bottom. Which looks like this. How many distinguishable ways can the letters banana be written? So the first thing I want to do is figure out how many letters are in banana, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my numerator. Then I have a B, I have an A, I have an N. How many times is B there? Once. How many times is A there? Three times. How many times is N there? Twice. So you could put the one factorial, but honestly, it's not going to do anything. You don't need it. You do need the three and the two. You with me so far? So now I'm going to say six and break it down till it hits the biggest one on the bottom, which is three. So six times five times four times three factorial over, I'm going to line up the three factorials, and then the other one would be two times one. Again, if you want the one there, you can have it, but you don't need it. It's not changing anything. The three factorials are canceling out. The ones won't matter. The two can either go into the six or into the four. And I get six times five times two, or 30 times two, which is 60. So there's 60 different ways to rearrange the letters in banana. If it was all different letters, it'd be six factorial, right? So that's why it's different. Okay, now we get combination. So remember we said the C is gonna come back into play. That's where combination is. So if you're selecting a subset from a set in which order is not important. So if I was picking letters, I would say A times B doesn't count any different than B times A because the order is, are, is not important. I've already used those letters together. They don't count twice. A permutation, they would count twice. A, times B would, A and B would be different than B and A. But a combination, they are not. How many ways can numbers be taken from the alphabet three at a time? So I, like I just said, if I said three letters, A, B, C is considered the same set as B, C, A and C, A, B because the order doesn't matter. So the difference between combination and permutation is permutation, the order matters, combination, it does not. For combination, this should look familiar, we use C and R which is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. All right, so this one says, in how many different ways can three letters be chosen from the letters a, b, c, d, and e? The order of the elements is not important. So if it's not important, am I using p or am I using c? C, c okay, n would be? One, two, three, four, five, right? So n is five. Oops. R is what? Three. So it's C, N, R, which is C, I mean, sorry, N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. Yep. So it has to say the order? It doesn't have to say it. More often than not, it will say the other way in round. It will say something about them being arranged or put in order. Then you'll know it's permutation. If that's not there, then it's usually combination. So like if it says the words, how many different ways can the letters A, B, C, D, E be put in order? Now it's permutation. How many different ways can they be arranged? Permutation. Chosen means I can pick any three in any order. It doesn't matter. Monica. Um, can you plug? Yeah, you could do it in the calculator like that, or you could do the PN, I mean the CNR on your calculator because that's also there. But more probably numbers like this, you wouldn't have it. So this would be five times four times three factorial over three factorial times two times one. These are going to cancel. Two goes into four twice, and this is ten. Okay, B says a standard poker hand consists of five cards dealt from a deck of 52. How many different poker hands are possible? Again, order's not important here. Because if you put them in your hands, can you rearrange them? Yeah. Yes, it's still the same hand. So that's the idea behind it. God bless you. So if a standard poker hand consists of five cards dealt from a deck of 52, what's my N? 52. 
What's my R? Five. So then I would do C, 52, five. God bless you. 52 factorial, 52 <coughs> minus five factorial times five factorial. 52, 47, 5, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, over 47, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Probably on something this big, you'd have your calculator, but let's work it through just in case. So I could go 2 into 48. 24 times 3 into 24, 8 times 4 into 8, 2 times 5 can go into 50, 10 times. So then I would have to do 52 times 51 times 10 times 49 times 2. I'm going to cheat and use the calculator. And then for problems, you said like we'll definitely know if it says not important. It won't say not important. It won't say order is important. So if it says the word, how many different ways can they be put in order? How many ways can they be arranged? That's permutation. If it does not say that, the words like chosen, uh, that kind of stuff you'll see that's combination. Honestly, that's the hardest part of this is figuring out which one is which. It seems pretty easy compared to which one four. Yeah, well, it's just different. I think eight four is just tedious. Once you get the hang of it, it shouldn't be too bad. It's just a matter of kind of like memorizing the formula and what it goes with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions? Yep. Yeah. So again, think of permutations as things being put in order or arranged and combinations as things that are just chosen. So a lot of times, like you'll see like things like, let's say I asked like, I had, let's, we, we play Kahoot, right? We play Kahoot with all of you guys. How many different ways can we, you guys place first, second, third? So if Brianna places first and if she places second, are those two different things? Yes, that's a permutation. If I just said, how many different ways can you get on a podium? Are you on the podium if you're in first or you're second? It doesn't matter the order, that's a combination. So finishing in a race, how many ways can you finish in your top three or medal? That's a combination. But if it said, how many ways can you finish first, second, third? That's permutation. If it says, you get onto the SGA board, if you're just on the board, that's a combination. If it says how many ways can you fill, president, vice president, secretary, now the order matters, so that is permutation. So you'll see a little bit of stuff like that. All right, I'm going to let you watch.